Good afternoon, everybody, and happy Labor Day. I'm Lee Nelson, and thank you for joining us on our online platforms this afternoon. Golf has taken over our programming this evening. We've packed a lot in for you on tonight's digital report, so let's get right to it, shall we? Here's a rundown of what you can expect to see in the next 10 minutes here online. First up to celebrate Labor Day and support President Trump, boaters and bikers and riders held a parade this afternoon. They gathered in Bucksport, a lot of boats sailed up the Penobscot River to Bangor where they met with the riders for a rally in support of President Trump and his re-election campaign. With Labor Day being the unofficial end of summer, of course, we went to Old Orchard Beach to check in and see how businesses fared during the summer tourism season that was certainly somewhat derailed, at least by the pandemic. New Center Maine Shannon Moss checked in with business owners who say the crowds and uh, business down about 50%. We're going to catch up with her and uh, find out what this means, maybe for next season. And more than 100 people gathered at the State House today to support the return of fall sports. What parents and student athletes had to say, that is still ahead as well. But before we get to those stories in detail, let's turn things over to Jess Conley with a first look at our forecast. Boy, the whole holiday weekend was just darn great, wasn't That's it, Jess? That's right. It was gorgeous. <laughs> it was lovely all weekend long, Lee. Uh, things will change a little bit maybe as we go into later in the week. We could get a, at least some of that much needed rain. Not a lot, though, still. Uh, just not on the way quite yet, but we'll talk about it all. Look at it right now. Gorgeous out there. 73 in York, Portland. It's just lovely. Standish is at 80 now. Bar Harbor at 69. But another beautiful day today. Look at Katahdin. Just great. Uh, I was looking at the uh, traffic cams earlier. Not too busy now, but uh, about an hour ago, that Biddeford one was very, very busy, of course, with many people leaving the state. A little breezy out there today, though, isn't it? Especially this afternoon, it's been pretty windy. The wind speeds right now, 10 to 15 miles an hour, gusting up to 20 to 25 miles an hour in some spots, even a little bit higher than that. But again, overall, it's just been a lovely day. High temperatures today mostly made it into the low to mid 70s. We have some warmer temperatures on the way for tomorrow. It's going to feel a little bit more like summer with warmer temperatures and more humidity. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the potential for maybe a little bit of rain, too, coming up, Lee, in just a bit. All right. Sounds good, Jess. Thank you very Thanks. much. So we wanted to see how Mainers have been celebrating the holiday. Text your Labor Day photos and videos to us. The number is 207-828-6622. We will have a 6 p.m. newscast tonight, and your pictures might just be featured right there on live TV. How cool is that? Again, text the photos to 207-828-6622. Show us how you are wrapping up this crazy summer of 2020. It certainly was a great day to get out on the water, and that is exactly what President Trump's supporters were doing in Maine this afternoon. Boats, also motorcycles and cars, not on the water but on the road, all taking part in a parade to show support of the president. A lot of boats made the trip up the Penobscot River from uh, Bucksport to Bangor, where they met up with the driving portion of the parade group. Bikers and riders were honking their horns from Bucksport to the Bangor waterfront as they waited for the boats to arrive. State Representative and organizer Richard Campbell says this was a great way for people to express their opinions about the president. People don't like politics a lot. But if it's a fun rally, if it's a fun, beautiful day like today, uh, boaters want to be on the water and bikes want to be on the road. So uh, it's coming together pretty well. Kibble added that he's never seen more excitement before a presidential election. New Center Maine Sam Rogers followed the parade this afternoon and he's going to give us more details. That'll come tonight at 6 o'clock on the air people's willingness to comply with the simple things that we know can reduce spread is going to start to fray as we head into the fall and the winter. Health officials are warning Americans not to let our guards down when it comes to taking precautions against COVID-19. As people celebrate Labor Day at the beaches and barbecues, they say, remember, you still have to practice social distancing. You still have to wear a mask in most places. Otherwise, the U.S. could see a major spike in cases of the virus, like what happened after Memorial Day and the 4th of July. President Trump says a vaccine could be out by the end of the year, if not sooner, but his Democratic opponents say that may not indeed be true. Now, since the start of the pandemic, we've seen a lot of misinformation surrounding the virus. One claim that keeps popping up online is that there won't be a vaccine for children for another eight to 10 years. Seems far away and perhaps a little far-fetched, so we had our Verify team look into it. Uh, what they found is coming up in the next 10 minutes. You want to stay tuned for that. 
The Labor Day caravan hit the streets of Portland this morning with union leaders calling on officials to protect workers, starting with speeches by labor leaders from all across the state. This hearse-led procession drove from the Eastern Promenade down Congress Street in Portland, all part of an effort to draw attention to the health risk that a lot of workers have been facing in the current pandemic, as many Americans have actually lost their lives due to poor working conditions. We honor those whose work is unpaid, those who cannot find work, those who have lost their work, and we honor those whose work has cost them their lives in this pandemic. And the rally also called for improvements to the United States Postal Service as uh, the need to address racial disparities in COVID-19 transmission uh, in Maine and across the country continues to. Labor Day always considered, again, as I said, the unofficial end of summer. What a summer we had, at least weather-wise, right? A good forecast is something a lot of businesses in Maine rely on for a successful season, but because of COVID and restricted travel, the tourism industry in Maine was hit really, really hard this year. As New Center Maine Shannon Moss tells us, this was evident today in Old Orchard Beach. Labor Day at Old Orchard Beach looks a lot different this year. It's definitely a lot less crowded. Look at this. This is a, a, the holiday that's hardly anybody here. A little slower than we expected. This year was a year of treading water. Not because of bad weather, but a pandemic that has hit Maine's tourism industry hard. I think we did the best we could with the, uh, the situation that we had at hand. Paul Carney runs Old Orchard Beach Airbrush, a business that has been at Old Orchard Beach for 25 years. The 14 day quarantine, whether or not people adhered to it or didn't adhere to it, you definitely saw a huge drop in numbers. Which means a huge drop in revenue. Uh, this year is about half um, and, you know, thankful that it is half. Usually today is uh, extremely busy, especially around lunchtime and not, no one online right now. But these businesses know things could have been worse, and they're grateful for the business they have had. We always love coming up here. Jeff Klausner and his wife came to Old Orchard Beach from upstate New York after delaying their trip in June when stricter travel restrictions were in place. Doing it the safe way with the masks and the hand sanitizers and the socially distant. Also a big blow for businesses in Old Orchard Beach, the Canadian border being closed to non-essential travel. The loss of uh, Canada, that's... Millions of dollars. Not so many Canadians this year. We kind of miss them. Hope they come back next year. Alan Buat, the owner of the original Pier Fries, is counting on it. I think with the pent up demand next year, if they're able to open the borders next year, this town might be busier than ever. Next year is going to be amazing. Fingers crossed the summer of 2021 will be a safe and successful one. In Old Orchard Beach, Shannon Moss, New Center, Maine. Tourism in Maine is a $6 billion industry. We're going to have to wait until next year to find out how much the pandemic did to the state's economy. Whether you're heading home after visiting Maine for the long weekend or you're traveling for a staycation, a reminder to stay safe on the road, you may see these signs on the highway. The Maine Department of Transportation is asking you to be cautious on the road and off the road as well. Now we're going to take a quick break, but uh, don't exit the browser as we have more local news right after this. The 2020 Maine U.S. Senate race is important to our state and the nation. This vote could possibly change the balance of power in the U.S. Senate. That's why New Center Maine's Voice of the Voter is teaming up with the Portland Press Herald and the Bangor Daily News for Decision Maine, the 2020 senatorial debate. Join us Friday at 7 for a live discussion with all four U.S. Senate candidates. Decision Maine, the 2020 senatorial debate, Friday at 7, sponsored on New Center Maine by AARP Maine. All right, we're back. The United States has reached a grim milestone in the fight against the virus. According to the latest numbers from NBC, more than 190,000 people have now died with COVID-19. The United States has surpassed 6 million confirmed cases. New York, New Jersey, Texas, California, they are reporting the highest number of fatalities. In Maine, the CDC is reporting 19 new cases of COVID today. Since yesterday, there are 491 active cases right now in the state, and according to the CDC, no new deaths were recorded. So the number stands at 134 Mainers who've died with the virus. Total number of cases since March, now slightly over 4,700. 
More than 100 student athletes and parents rallied outside the state house earlier today to advocate for the return of fall sports. This after the Maine Principals Association, the MPA, received a letter last week from the Maine Department of Health and Human Services and the Department of Education urging the MPA to reconsider guidance for the fall sports season. In new community sports guidelines released by the state last week, it's recommended only golf and cross country would be able to play statewide. More high risk sports, football, volleyball, for example, they would be recommended to just be inter squad. We're hoping that our leadership in Augusta gets our gets our message. Um, Governor Mills, um, the Department of Education and DHHS um, that we're willing to do whatever it takes for our kids to play. Now, the Maine Principals Association opted to just for now delay the start of the season until September 14th. New Center Maine reached out to the association about the rally. We haven't heard back. We'll have a full story about this, though, tonight at 6 o'clock as well. RSU 57 in York County. The school system has delayed the start of its whole school year. This is according to the superintendent, Larry Maloney. The start of the school will be delayed for one week. This comes after a person associated with the school district's transportation department tested positive. The uh, school district had planned to begin a staggered start of the school year with some in-person classes tomorrow. But in a letter to families, Maloney says the start of the year for both remote and in-person learning is now delayed until September 14th. Now, as kids do head back to the classroom, health officials stress the need for a vaccine to stop the spread of COVID-19 among kids. When could we expect to see one? Well, a post on social media says we might not see one for eight or 10 years. Is that true? Our Verify team looked into it. Here's what they found. It's easy to share misinformation about coronavirus without even knowing it. That's why our Verify team exists, to find out what's real and what's not. A viewer asked our Verify team to check out this claim on social media. It says a pediatrician told a mother a COVID-19 vaccine won't be developed for kids for at least 8 to 10 years. So let's verify. Could it really take up to 10 years before a vaccine is ready for kids? Our sources on this one, Dr. Brian Kaminsky of ProMedica, a nonprofit healthcare system. Dr. Buddy Creech, a pediatric infectious disease expert at Vanderbilt University School of Medicine and the Johns Hopkins University Center for Global Health. And right off the bat, all three sources tell us this is false. It will not take eight to 10 years before a pediatric COVID-19 vaccine is developed. I can say confidently that that one uh, is false. When, when we develop vaccines, we need to use human trials. And human trials involve consenting adults that are willing to take the risks associated with the trial. An expert with the Johns Hopkins Center for Global Health says after a COVID-19 vaccine proves safe and effective in adults, then clinical trials in children will start. The center says at least one manufacturer is planning to test their vaccine in children and others are working on doing the same. Dr. Creech says when it comes to the coronavirus, older adults with medical complications are suffering the most, so that population is the priority. He says children will follow adults in trials because children are less likely to develop a severe case. Dr. Creech says certain benchmarks will have to be met before a major pediatric COVID-19 vaccine program rolls out, but that it will not take eight to 10 years. So we can verify false. Our experts say it won't be eight to 10 years until children can get a COVID-19 vaccine. Okay, there you go. And as any parent can tell you, the return to school means the return of runny noses and surprise fevers, etc. How can you tell if it's just a regular old normal childhood illness or if it's coronavirus? Well, let's take a closer look. First things first, according to pediatricians, it'll be hard this year to tell the difference between coronavirus and your uh, run-of-the-mill childhood illnesses because, according to the CDC, the most common symptoms for kids are cough and fever. So there you go. So what are doctors telling parents? Well, they're saying use common sense. If you see something unusual or worsening symptoms like a really high fever or acute stomach trouble or even a rash, then call your doctor at least for advice at the start. And when should your child stay home? Infectious disease experts are telling parents this is not the time to send any sick kids back to school even if their symptoms are mild. Now on top of worrying about illness, parents are having to help their students navigate virtual learning, creating a school environment at home sometimes without any distractions. Feels like kind of a joke, right? Have no fear, one teacher is tackling this problem head on, creating a library of virtual backgrounds to give people some privacy and perhaps more importantly, an even playing field. Here's Jasmine Turner with that story. The beginning of our new school year, 
It's going to be different, but it's also an opportunity to think outside of the box. And thinking outside of the virtual education box is starting with a background for the RPS community. We all know that our kids have been through a lot. The last thing we want to make sure that when they come back to school, they have to worry about being inquisitive about what other kids have and what they don't have. Technology entrepreneur and former RPS teacher Bismarck Ekbembele, well known as Mr. B, created a solution through his company, Plug-in Technology Corporation. From pre-K all the way to high school, every school will have their own customized background. Be mindful of who wants whom within their personal space. School board member Cheryl Burke has seen the need for what she calls an even playing field in her district. I don't want you to be distracted while I'm presenting. So this puts all our children, we talk about equity and equality, this puts everyone on the same footing. And it all starts with a few clicks. One would say inspired, as you can see. All right, so something motivational. It could be my, my birthday. Today, guess what? You've been able to solve this problem. You're the student of the week. But it's rare that you get the combination of a, um, a, a real important problem solved and in a way that also adds fun. Chief Academic Officer Dr. Tracy Epps says the downloadable backgrounds are a reminder. We are going back to school. And can help create an excitement about getting back to learning, even if it's not in person. And having a choice of these backdrops gives teachers um, a way to use uh, backdrops to engage kids. Hmm, interesting. That is Jasmine Turner reporting. Now, whether your student is at home during virtual learning or you've opted to, to homeschool, we do have a list of resources to help you tackle the school year from online study aids, instructional videos. Parents, we've got you covered for all your back to school needs. Just head to newcentermain.com and then search virtual learning uh, there or on the mobile app. Take advantage of these free resources uh, so you're not going it alone because it can be a little anxiety provoking. And if you look on our website, you'll also see stories of programs in Maine that are helping kids bridge this academic gap, like a program called Dirigo Reads. It's helping kids improve their reading abilities one book at a time. The initiative kicked off last year and they gave out more than 3,000 books to first graders in just six Maine schools last year. Uh, the program's now expanded to 26 schools in Maine, meaning an estimated 700 first graders will receive a new book every month this school year through this program. And despite the challenges of COVID and uh, the challenges they've placed on schools and book distributors, it's not stopping Irigo Reads from getting kids their first book again this month. We are uh, in the process of placing that first order for uh, the September book that 26 schools will be receiving. Literacy rates in Maine and really around the country could be better and part of that comes from a foundation of uh, a love of reading and, and learning to advance reading. So that's really what Dirigo Reads is all about. Now there are about 12,000 first graders enrolled in public schools in Maine. Any organizations interested in partnering with Dirigo Reads or schools with first grade classes that would like to join the program, you can find more details at dirigoreads.org. Still ahead on our digital report today, working from home has been a challenge for many. What about networking from home? If you're looking for your next gig, you may be running into some problems finding a way to connect with potential employers, but we've got some advice from experts on how to bridge this gap next. And it's going to be a little bit warmer actually tomorrow, but also we might have at least some of our much needed rain on the way. So we'll talk about all of that coming up after this. Challenging enough to make a movie under any circumstances, imagine doing it during a pandemic in just 48 hours. That was the challenge for a handful of Mainers. Write the script, shoot the movie, edit it all from 7 in the evening on Friday to 7 on Sunday. You're pretty delirious uh, by Saturday night after filming. This took some planning. They had to quarantine before shooting and then socially distance while making the movie. They went on to win a whole bunch of awards, including Best Film in the Boston chapter of the 48-Hour Film Challenge. Score one for the filmmakers from Maine. Hey, if you're working from home these days, you may miss the camaraderie, the connections that come with the office environment. Working remotely does not mean you have to miss out on networking, however. All right, NBC's Susan McGinnis tells us how professionals are networking from the couch. When the coronavirus pandemic forced employees across the nation to work from home, millions were left without an essential component of professional life, networking. Well, there's this new era of work from home and 
professionals were more disconnected than ever before. Forced to get creative, they're turning to virtual networking platforms like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and Fishbowl, a social network app that connects professionals to chat, ask questions, and network for jobs. Lauren Appen is co-founder. Zoom is the new meeting room. Fishbowl is the new office hallway. I posted on Fishbowl, and I went specifically into the women in advertising bowl. Users interact directly with peers and company leadership in groups called bowls. Kara Goncher, an early user, landed a job there. Did I said, would someone be willing to pass along my creative portfolio to the recruiter there? And some really kind stranger volunteered, and later that week, I got an interview, and then later on, the job. With an estimated 85% of jobs filled by some form of networking, experts say it's a critical tool. Networking, whether in person or COVID times virtually, is a necessity. People come to Fishbowl to connect with others in their industry or company to have real conversations and be candid. Making connections at a much needed time. Susan McGinnis, NBC News, Washington. Now with a lot of people Expecting the work from home culture to actually last longer the, than the pandemic will. Experts say remote networking uh, skill all professionals should have. Uh, we want some feedback from you. How are you networking during this pandemic? We asked you during the morning report, the majority of viewers then 49%. Well, that's not a majority, but 49% are saying uh, through phone calls or by email. That's how they're doing it. If you would like to weigh in, head to our website at pulse.newcentermain.com. Click on the Pulse section of our mobile app as well. All right, let's talk about the weather again. Jess okay. is here. She's got a bright dress on because it was a bright day, right, Jess? It was Jess? gorgeous. Yeah, this whole weekend, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we've really lucked out all summer, and now that summer is kind of coming to an unofficial yeah. end. I was just looking at the Ooh. sunset tonight. It's right around 7. So oh, worst. my gosh. I know. It's the worst. I don't like it. All right, let's talk about the good stuff, though. We have a lot of that on the way. Temperatures right now aren't too bad. 73 in Bangor. Same thing for Portland, 73 right now. Augusta is at 74 degrees. Lewiston at 72. Look at Freiburg, 80. Tomorrow, temperatures will warm up a little bit more, actually, and the humidity will increase a little bit going into the day tomorrow, too, so it might feel a little bit more like summer as we head into tomorrow afternoon. Our dew points right now for most of us are in the 50s, fairly dry air in place, but we'll see again those increase tomorrow and we'll see a little bit more humidity. I keep saying a little bit, I gotta get out of that. All right, some clouds moving into parts of Maine now as we head into tomorrow. We'll see a mix of sun and clouds. Overall, things looking good uh, for tomorrow, even into Wednesday, and eventually we'll get a chance for seeing maybe a couple showers later in the week. All right, so for the rest of the night tonight, maybe a sprinkle or two, but most of us will stay dry. Tomorrow morning, those temperatures starting in the low 60s for most of us at 7 a.m. Then as we go into tomorrow afternoon, things will be able to warm up. You can see our high temperatures, upper 70s, low to even maybe some mid 80s away from the coast with that mix of sun and clouds. As we go into the day on Wednesday, temperatures drop again overnight, but it's not too bad. Temperatures stay for most of us in the upper 50s and lower 60s to start on Wednesday morning. By Wednesday afternoon, we're warming back up. I think we'll make it closer to uh, 80 degrees than this particular model is showing a mix of sun and clouds again as we go into Thursday though that's when we have the next chance of seeing a few showers mainly Thursday afternoon and Thursday evening a couple thunderstorms are possible but that's really it so again that's our next chance but it's just one chance we still need rain of course we're way way below normal for this time of year Friday looks dry and if you're already planning for next weekend who isn't? It's looking dry again. Maybe another chance of rain as we get into early next week. But again, we need it. Hopefully we'll get some uh, as we head into next week. Still watching the tropics too. We now have Tropical Storm Paulette. Keeping an eye on that. We also have Tropical Depression 18 right here. I know I've mentioned this a lot, but we are cruising through these names. We only have five names left, in fact, and we still have a lot of the season to go. Uh, in September, 34% of name storms form, but we still have October and all of November. 
So I think we're going to go into the Greek alphabet this year for names. We'll see, though. Seas tomorrow, 3 to 4 feet. Winds from the south at 5 to 10 knots. Water temperature is 60, what was it, 62 degrees. All right, so for tomorrow, uh, warmer and more humid for short temperatures make it into the low to mid-80s. Pretty much the same thing for Wednesday, low to mid-80s. Again, on Thursday, that's when we have that next chance of seeing some showers and thunderstorms. Then that front comes through, cools us off, and dries us out for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You can see next weekend, definitely going to be cooler, but still staying nice and brightly, getting back to kind of closer to normal for high temperatures. But more heat and humidity tomorrow. I yeah. know you like that. All right, I like it, and, <laughs> and I like the whole thing. The, yeah, whole, the, the, the whole nine yards sounds good to me. <laughs> Thank you, Jess, very Thanks. much. And hey, that's going to do it for New Center Maine at 4 o'clock today online. We appreciate you rolling with the punches uh, this afternoon. And we are back on the air at 6 o'clock tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. From all of us here at New Center Maine, we hope you have a safe Labor Day. We'll see you at 6.